let's just dive into Psalm 94, verses 12 through 19. It reads on this wise, Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord. Woo! Adonai. Mm. Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law that thou may give him rest from the days of adversity until the pit be digged for the wicked. For the Lord will not cast off his people, neither will he forsake his inheritance. But judgment shall return unto righteousness, and all the upright in heart shall follow it. Who will rise up for me against the evildoers? Wow. Or who will stand up for me against the workers of iniquity? Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost dwelt in silence. Or that could mean my soul had quickly dwelt in silence. Hang on, Hope. Hold on, my pulpit's moving. Hold on. Mount of Olives, you know, does have her own mind. Unless the Lord had been my help, my soul had almost and or quickly dwelt in silence. When I said, My foot slippeth thy mercy, O Lord, held me up in the multitude of my thoughts within me. Thy comforts delight my soul. Father God, I praise you and I thank you today for this glorious break in the weather. It's cool. The wind is blowing. Father God, I lift up the name of Yeshua Hamashiach. The Lord of Lords, the King of Kings, I plead and apply the blood of Yeshua over this time, over myself, over Hope on a Star, a.k.a. the Mount of Olives, Olivet, all of those that would listen, Lord, Father God, I just ask you to put your mind in, in, in their minds in remembrance, Father God, of who you are and whom they belong to in whom they are. They have their living and they're moving and they're breathing through you, Father God. Let them be mindful of the Spirit of God and the presence of God in them at all times. Let them have a praise on their lips and thanksgiving in their hearts. And Father God, I thank you, Lord, that you have given us ten blessings of the just. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Yeshua Hamashiach. Amen. So, saints, we have ten blessings of the just here in Psalm 94. I know you're not going to like this first one because uh, none of us do, but at the end of the day, once you learn about the chastening of the Lord and you understand it, you're okay with it because you know that it's going to get you to that point in these end days that you're not deceived. So the chastening of Yahuwah is uh, basically in the New Testament in Hebrews chapter 12, verses... 5 through 11. And again, folks don't like this, but let's go ahead and cover this one because this is this is the, the most wonderful one that we have to prove that we're sons of the Most High God. But so many people are just quick to say, oh, it's of the devil or the devil is attacking you or blah, blah. They're giving the devil the honor and the glory instead of saying, Father God, thank you that I'm your son I am your child, and when I'm wrong and I've done wrong, you would correct me. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Father God. So in verse 11, Hebrews 5, 11, of whom we have many things to say and hard to be uttered, seeing you are dull of hearing. <laughs> Oops, wrong scripture. <laughs> well, you know, I don't consider that wrong because we're dull of hearing. If we would hear... The word when we read it or people speak it to us and it would sink into our souls um, we'd be able to understand God's word so thank you Lord for that um, that was Hebrews 5 and 11 but we're looking for Hebrews 12 <laughs> thank you Lord remind us Lord that we're dull of hearing and we need to open our ears and bend them towards you so in Hebrews 12, 5, it says, And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as unto children. My son, that's us. We're sons of the Most High God. There's no gender in heaven, okay? I, I don't care what people say. If you look at the angels, they're gender neutral. And fat 
actually our Father in Heaven and it says that we're all to be sons of the Most High God. Come on, saints. Anybody with me? Quit making God what you want Him. And you have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, My son, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of Him. So let's go back here. Chastening of Yahuwah. Saints, if you think about this, when we're chastened of the Lord, we're considered His sons. He's not going to chasten the unrighteous folk out there. He's not going to chasten, He's not going to correct those who are not His. That's up to the enemy. That is up to the Father that they follow. The Father in Heaven is going to chasten His sons and he's going to get through to us. The enemy chastens his own sons. Okay? Think about that. The Lord takes his hands off. Bam! I don't want to be in the enemy camp, saints. So, one of the blessings of the just is that you're chastened of the Lord. And you're going to know when you're chastened of the Lord. Because you can rebuke the devil all day long. You can plead and apply the blood of Yeshua all day long. And you're still going to be chastened. Because you're fighting the wrong battle instead of just surrendering to the chastening. We need to thank God that we're sons of the Most High and that we are loved enough to be corrected. Uh, we love this next one, don't we? Teaching out of the law. See, saints, folk want to forget the law, but Jesus came to fulfill the law. And if he's the fulfillment of the law, then we're going to be mindful of the law and we're not going to break the law. His law. New Testament, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, mind, soul, and strength. Love your neighbor as yourself. Hang the law and the prophets on these two. So saints, if you're practicing number one and number two, everything else is going to line up. You're not going to be breaking the law. If you get in the word and study, show yourself approved. That's part of the armor of God. You'd know this. I'm just admonishing you today. If you're not in the Word of God, if you're not getting into the Word of God, then you're going to be chastened because you are responsible for your own salvation, working it out in fear and trembling. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I'm not. Not sorry a bit. And I'm not going to apologize for telling the truth. If they tell you once you're saved, you're always saved, and you ain't got to do nothing else, just wait till the rapture, or wait till Jesus comes back, or wait till you die and go to heaven, they're lying to you. The Bible is very clear. Holy Scripture says, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Think about that. You work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Where do you work it out? In the teaching of the law. That's one of the ten blessings of the just. Rest from adversity. Well, honey, if you've got an adversary, then you must be a child of the Most High God and be blessed from the adversary not being able to destroy you by God's hand. He said you would rest from adversity. You're going to have an adversary because the Word of God, the Holy Scripture says your adversary... Uh-huh. The enemy, he seeks whom he may destroy. You know, he goes around as a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. It says that he takes them captive at will. If you're a son of the Most High God, the enemy, the adversary, cannot take you at will because you've worked on your salvation and you've put the flesh to death. You're led of the Lord. He said, I will give you rest from adversity. Number four, rest all the days of your life. Saints, if you can't rest, if you have insomnia, if you can't get any rest, if you're always in chaos and confusion, um, think about that. That is not of the Lord. So, hmm, where does that confusion and chaos and ugliness come from? Well, if the Lord takes his hand off and he's chastening you and you don't agree and you don't like it, and you're constantly rebuking the devil, and you're still being chastised. 
you're going to have rest and you're going to have peace if you're in a right relationship with the Lord. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord God Almighty himself will deliver them out of all of afflictions. So you will have rest all the days of your life, saints. You will have protection and care. Read Psalm 91, the greatest protection and I need help, Lord. The greatest scripture in the whole entire Bible when you when you really need to know that God is protecting you and keeping you. You're a son of the Most High God. That's one of the blessings of the just. The just are in a just and righteous relationship with the Lord. I love this verse, this next one, and uh, number six is God's faithfulness. God's faithfulness, saints. See, we can never, ever, ever outdo his faithfulness because he's faithful when we're not. Woo, hallelujah. Thank you for your faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. I love you, Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you. Thank you for your faithfulness, Lord. Ah, number seven, justice. Saints, if the enemy is coming at you and he's got a right to, then maybe you need to figure out why and get right with the Lord because if you're right with the Lord, the Lord will give you justice. Remember the widow in the in the New Testament. You know, she keeps going to the unrighteous judge and he keeps, nah, nah, nah. He's not a believer. He's not a son of the Most High God. He could care less about her. He's an unjust judge. But let me tell you what, the, the just judge, your daddy, Abba Father, let me tell you what, saints, he is not going to allow you to remain in that pit. Get right with him. He will give you justice. That's one of the ten blessings of the just. Justice for the just. Number eight, defense against evildoers. Go back to Psalm 91. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Oh, wait a minute, that's Psalm 23. Um, <laughs> he who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the wings of Shaddai. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my strength, my God in whom I trust. If you trust in the Lord, he will give you a defense against evildoers. And he will also lead you beside still waters and put you down in the pasture uh, that's green and all that good stuff, saints. Um, There's so many psalms that tell us and promise us. The Holy Spirit lives in us and moves through us and guides us and leads us. I'm not going to sit here and preach you a sermon that I have memorized. I'm going to be listening to the Lord, and he puts that out there because he is the one that's leading me. I'm not leading myself. I'm not going to quote you scripture after scripture, and that's, that's, that's it. I'm quoting scripture. There's nothing wrong with quoting scripture, but you know what? The devil does that. He knows the scripture better than we do. So, saints, if you have defense against evildoers... You're going to know when it's the Spirit of God. He's spontaneous. He has a sense of humor. Praise God. Elohim. Ha <laughs> ha. The God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I praise you. Thank you, Lord. We don't make mistakes on purpose, saints. But sometimes if you made one, like quoting the wrong scripture that you wanted to quote a different one, you know, just say it. Move on. I'm quoting Psalm 23 instead of Psalm 91. I can quote them both, but I don't want to right now. I just encourage you to memorize Psalm 91. It took me a year, and then I'll be praying it and start uh, stumbling through it, and I have to call upon the Holy Spirit to remember it. Praise the Lord, because I know I can do nothing good without Him. But with Him and through Him, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I love the fact that I have a defense against evildoers, and that's my word. Word. If you hide that word in your heart, saints. Woo! I love number nine, too. I love all of them because they're all blessings. But we will have defense against workers of iniquity. Now, there are evildoers, and then there are people, the witches, the warlocks, the sorcerers, the gainsayers, the naysayers. I mean, saints, I'm talking about the people that are doing some satanic, ritualistic abuse, some ugly, evil things, astral projecting into your house, just causing all kind of problems up in the body of Christ. Chaos, because the body of Christ, they look, a lot of them look just like the world. So he's like, well, you know, they look like the world, they talk like the world, they act like the world, I'm going to go visit them. Saints, 
we will have defense against the workers of iniquity. So if you're being attacked by the workers of iniquity and you are being attacked by evildoers, hmm, there's probably a reason for that, saints. Uh, Job, I know you were going to say Job, the Lord allowed it, but think about it, saints. We're in the New Testament, the New Covenant. We have promises from the Old and the New Testament that God will never leave us. He will never forsake us. So if he never leaves us or forsakes us and the enemy has a right to attack us, then we need to get right with the Lord. Well, you know, I can back it up that, you know, the suffering and the afflictions of the righteous are many. Yes, they are. But you don't have to make it worse by disobeying and disagreeing and defiling the temple. Keep the temple holy. Keep the temple pure. You're going to know when it's the chastening of the Lord and when it's an attack of the enemy. Don't be quick to blame it on the workers of evil and the workers of iniquity. You have a defense against such. Oh, I love number 10, help at all times. I just said it. See, the Lord knows stuff. He knows this a whole lot better than I do, saints help at all times he said i will never leave you i will never forsake you saints be blessed today with the 10 blessings the 10 blessings